What is going on, wonderful people? It's Metacosis Perfectionalis. Welcome back to my mathematics playlist. In previous videos, we talked about how to do math without a calculator. We talked about how to find the slope, as well as the measure of central tendency, such as the mean, the median, and the mode. Today, we'll talk about geometrical figures, the perimeter, and the area for each when they are two-dimensional. But when they are three-dimensional, we'll talk about the volume and the surface area. Today, you will learn about the square, the rectangle, the triangle, the circle, the rhombus, the trapezius or trapezoid, the parallelogram, the cube, the cuboid, the sphere, the cylinder, and much more. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. This is my mathematics playlist. Geometrical figures are divided into plane and solid. This is a very simplistic approach. Plane means two-dimensional, but solid means three-dimensional. Plane includes these. These plane figures, such as the square, the rectangle, the triangle, the circle, the rhombus, the parallelogram, etc. But the solid is three-dimensional, which means you can pour water inside of it. It has depth such as the cube, the cuboid. Notice that the cube is made of a bunch of squares, but the cuboid is made of rectangles. The cube has six surfaces, the cuboid has six surfaces as well. This is a sphere and this is a cylinder. Let's start with the first figure, the square. If the side length of the square is L, of course the square by definition means that all sides are equal, so all of them are L. What is the perimeter? The perimeter is basically the following. Imagine that you started with a thread, just a thin, long thread like this, and then you're gonna make a shape of a square using that thread. The perimeter is the total length of that thread. So this is L plus L plus L plus L, or simply 4L. There you go. How about the surface area of the square? The surface area of the square is the area of the surface. All of this, not the perimeter, but what's on the inside. This is the surface area. To find it for a square, you simply multiply the length by the width, and since they are the same, it's L times L, or simply L squared. For example, suppose that the L is 4 centimeters, then what is the perimeter? It's 4 times 4 centimeters, or simply 16 centimeters. How about the surface area? It is 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters, so let's write this down, 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters equals 4 times 4 is 16 centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. And this is where we get the word squared from. Squared because it's a surface area of a square. Now let's change the L, the side length. Let's suppose that it's now 5 instead of 4. Therefore, 4 times 5 centimeters equals 20 centimeters. And the surface area will be 5 centimeters times 5 centimeters equals 25 centimeters squared. Rectangle is similar to the square, but there is a difference. Not all of the sides are equal in length. Only two sides are equal, we call this the length, and the other two sides are also equal, so we call them the width. But the width is not the same as the length. If the width is the same as the length, then this becomes a square. Perimeter, L plus W plus L plus W, or simply 2 multiplied by L plus W. There you go. How about the surface area? Just like the square, you multiply this by this, okay? In the square, they were the same. The length and the width were the same, but here they are not exactly the same. Next, the triangle. Why do you call it triangle? Tri means three. Angle is an angle. Here is an angle, one. Here is an angle, two. Here is an angle, three. Triangle. Not only does it have three angles, but also three sides. So, what's the perimeter of the triangle? The H plus the X plus the B, just like this, easy peasy. Okay, how about the surface area of the triangle? Half the base times the height. Half the base multiplied by the height. Let's practice. Suppose that the base is three and the height is four and this, which is known as the hypotenuse, is five. Okay, what is the perimeter? It is four plus three plus five or 12 centimeters. How about the surface area? Half of the base times the height. Half multiplied by 3 multiplied by 4. Half of the 4 is 2 times 3 is 6 centimeters squared. Because when you multiply a centimeter by a centimeter, you get centimeter squared. Next, the circle. The circle has a radius, as you see. Double the radius is called the diameter. 
If you multiply the diameter of the circle by pi, you get the perimeter of the circle. And since the diameter is 2 times radius, you can say that the perimeter is 2 pi r. What is pi? Well, without getting too philosophical about it, if you divide both sides of the equation by diameter, then you have that pi equals the perimeter of the circle divided by its diameter. When you divide the perimeter of the circle, by its diameter, the result is pi. Surprise, surprise, pi does not change. You can get a bigger circle, a smaller circle, an in-between circle. Doesn't matter, pi's value is the same. Approximately 3.14, just to keep it simple. How about the surface area of the circle? The surface area of the circle is pi, which is about 3.14, times r squared. The parallelogram, gram because it's a drawing, it's an illustration, it's a diagram basically, parallelo because everything is parallel here. You find that this L is parallel to that L, and this width is parallel to that width. That's why it's a parallelogram. How do we find the perimeter of this? Simple, it's 2 multiplied by length plus width. Oh, just like the perimeter of the rectangle. Yes, indeed, because a parallelogram is nothing more than a naughty rectangle. How about the surface area of the parallelogram? You find the length and you multiply it by this height. Okay, so it is L multiplied by H, which is similar but not identical to the rectangle. Remember that the rectangle is erect, not leaning like this. So you only take the erect height, just like this, the vertical height. Not that slopey one, but the vertical one. You multiply the vertical height by the horizontal length, just like the rectangle. In the rectangle, the width was the same as the vertical height. So we said length times width. But here it's different. It's length times height. Because I gotta find the vertical height. Next, rhombus. What is the perimeter of the rhombus? This is length, this is width, and this is height. This is very similar to the parallelogram, which means we're gonna multiply 2 by the total of length and width. So you add length and width together, then you multiply by 2. How about the surface area of the rhombus? Well, just like the parallelogram, the length multiplied by the vertical height, just like that. Next, trapezoid or trapezium. Trapezium is British English, trapezoid is American English. Both of these words are referring to this object. Perimeter is easy, just add all of them together. A plus B plus C plus D, add all the sides together. How about the surface area of the trapezoid slash trapezium? Well, I wish that A equals B, but they're not. So we're gonna take the average, which means A plus B divided by two. Then you gotta multiply by the vertical height as always. So all of this is multiplied by H. Next, the polygons, including this one, two, three, four, five, pentagon, or it could be six sides, hexagon, or seven sides, heptagon, or eight sides, octagon. If you wanna find the perimeter, you simply take n, which is the number of sides, and you multiply this by L, okay? So for example, here I have one, two, three, four, five sides, so the n equals five. Let's suppose that the L is 4. So you multiply 5 by 4 centimeters, you get 20 centimeters. To find the surface area of a polygon, you do this. Half times N times H times L. N is the number of sides. In this case, it is 5. H is the vertical height. And L is the side length. In this case, it was 4. These rules are gonna work whether you're talking about a pentagon, hexagon, octagon, I don't care. We're done with the plane two-dimensional geometrical figures. Now let's talk about the solid three-dimensional geometrical figures. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, please drop your favorite geometrical figure emoji in the comments. This is the cube. It's made of six surfaces. Each surface is a square. So what's the surface area? It's the surface area of the square multiplied by six because I have six squares. One is up, one is down. One is anterior, one is posterior. One to the left, one to the right. How about the volume of the cube? The volume of the cube is the side length cubed. And that's why we say cubed. For example, if each length is two, then 2 cubed is what? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 what? Centimeter cubed. And this is where you get the word cubed from. If you want to go back from the 8 to the 2, we call this the cubic root. But for the square, if you want to go back from this 
to the side length of the square, you simply square root it. But there is no need to write 2 because it's implied. Square root versus cubic root. There you go. Square it or cube it. Next, the cuboid. The cuboid is a bunch of rectangles, six rectangles to be specific. What if you want the surface area? Then you need the surface area of this triangle, which is the same as the triangle behind. Okay, so what do you do? Well, I simply do L times H, which is the surface area of this triangle. And since I have two of them, it is two plus the surface area of this triangle, which equals the surface area of that triangle. Okay, I have the W, I have the H, so it is two W H plus. Don't forget the triangle on top and the triangle at the bottom. The triangle on top, well, you have L here and you have W there. So it is plus 2 L times W. This is how you find the surface area of the cuboid. As for the volume of the cuboid, you multiply this by this by that. The length by the width by the height. In the cube, they were equal, but in the cuboid, they are not equal. So you write it like this. Next, the sphere. Think of the sphere as four circles to keep it simple. Oh, you have four circles. How do you find the surface area of four circles? The surface area of one circle is pi r squared. Multiply that by four and voila, you have the surface area. As for the volume of the sphere or how much water can you pour into a sphere, it is four over three pi r cubed. Squared for the area, cubed for the volume. Next, the cylinder. How do you find the surface area of the cylinder? You need the surface area of this circle. The surface area of a circle is what? It is pi r squared. And how many circles do you have? One on top, one at the bottom. So I have two plus the surface area of the rest. You can actually unwrap the cylinder and voila, you have something like this. You have a rectangle when you unwrap this. And this rectangle has what? It has a height, which is h. This is the width of the triangle. As for the length, it's the perimeter of the circle. And the perimeter of the circle is what? It is 2 pi r. How do you find the surface area of this rectangle? Length times width, 2 pi r times h or 2 pi r h. This is the surface area of the two circles. And this is the surface area of the intervening rectangle. Next, the volume of the cylinder. The volume of the cylinder is what? Well, think of the surface area times the height. Oh, the surface area of the circle times the height. Because when you pour water into the cylinder, you're going to pour water at that level, which is the first circle. And then again and again and again and again, as you go up H times. It's time for a quiz. This is a sphere. Okay. And then what? There is a radius for that sphere. All right. And this radius for that sphere is five centimeters. Please find the surface area of the sphere as well as the volume of the sphere. Let me know your answer in the comments. Help me make more videos by supporting the channel. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash medicosis. There are more than 600 premium videos on this channel when you click the join button and choose the highest tier. Please subscribe, hit the bell, smash like, support my channel on Patreon, PayPal or Venmo. Go to my website to download my courses, notes and cases, or if you would like me to personally tutor you. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionators, where medicine, chemistry, math and physics make perfect sense.